We took the highest rated player in the world to see how long they could survive alone against a group of bloodthirsty DPS. We then sent out a challenge in Discord to see if anyone in the community could beat the record set by a rank 1 player. But we knew that wouldn't be exactly fair, right? So to up the stakes, we contacted one of the best multi-classers in the game to see if they could beat our pro. Today, we will be going head-to-head -head in the ultimate wizard battle, putting mages and warlocks to the test in a survival gauntlet to see if the average player is able to keep up with the pros and put their defensive skills to the test. If they do, then they will be crowned the first champion in our Zero Healer Challenge. First though, if you want to win 60 days of game time, be sure to stick around later to learn how to participate in future videos. To start our challenge, we needed a record time to beat, which is why we contacted Marrow, who at the time of making this video was the highest rated solo shuffle player in the entire world. His challenge would be to survive alone against a Demon Hunter and a Windwalker Monk, two of the most mobile melee DPS in all of PvP. With that in mind, we want you to make a prediction. How long will Marrow survive against our two highly mobile DPS? Keep in mind, he is using a fairly standard arena build that is probably going to be used by the majority of arcane mages you see on ladder. Anyway, without a healer to help him survive, Marrow would have to get a bit creative, and 30 seconds into his best attempt, the strategy was becoming very clear. His goal was to always keep the maximum distance from both melee at all times. This would require him to constantly keep a mobility advantage over both enemy players at the same time, despite the Monk and Demon Hunter having numerous tools to stay connected. Because of the mobility creep in recent expansions, every melee DPS feels like a Ferrari in Arena. This means keeping your distance with snares should be your first line of proactive defense. This will force enemy melee to use their gap closer in order to reconnect, but now this allows you to start gaining a mobility advantage by responding with a gap creator of your own. This could be a root, blink, or teleport to name a few things. But if you want to minimize melee uptime, it's best to wait until they have used their mobility options first so you can respond with yours immediately after and keep the mobility advantage. This is what was making it hard for our Demon Hunter and Monk to stay connected, because every time they used one of their gap closers, Marrow would instantly be ready with one of his own mobility options. This was one of the ways he was able to survive for so long without any help from a healer in Arena, and it wasn't until one minute into his best attempt that Marrow even needed to ice block. This now meant that he was on a very strict timer, and his HP was about to come to an end, but even after Ice Block was down, Marrow managed to live for another 20 seconds, which now meant that 1 minute 20 seconds was the time to beat for the rest of our contestants. The three people up for the challenge include two duelist level players. The first, an arcane mage who is currently 2100 in solo shuffle, and a demo warlock with the same rating but with previous gladiator level experience. Finally, to make things fair and interesting, we also hit up Mercy, who is widely considered one of the best warlocks in all of EU. Now, we had two pros and two average players going head-to-head -head in the Ultimate Wizard Showdown, but before we crown the winner, if you want to be the next contestant to compete against Rank 1 players, then head over to our Discord server to get notified about upcoming events. We will be offering prizes to all of our competitors, including a chance to win big in future high-stakes events. While you are there, you can download our add-ons package and see the new forum feature for our Ask a Pro section, where website members can get advice from Rank 1 players. This is one of the many perks offered by a skill cap membership, which also includes a money back guarantee if you don't gain at least 400 rating while actively using our website. So if you want to get started on your next PvP journey, check out the links below. Anyway, let's get back to the video. The first competitor to take on Marrow's record was a 2100 mage. His opening strategy mirrored what is commonly seen in Solo Shuffle, where arcane mages cast Ring of Frost during mass invisibility, which causes it to be invisible to enemy players. While this approach might seem reasonable on paper, there were no snares out on the enemy melee, and even though the monk walked into the invisible ring, the demon hunter was able to counter it using reverse magic. This meant that there was no opportunity to create a gap early on, which forced our mage to trinket and blink to get out of harm's way, meaning they were already behind on mobility from the start. This was a huge difference compared to Marrow, who focused on maintaining distance, especially by keeping up Chrono Shift on both players as often as possible. Anyway, our 2100 mage still managed to do pretty good against our melee, cycling through every cooldown one by one until nothing was left, and in the end, managed to survive for a total of 53 seconds, which put him in second place on our scoreboard. Now though, it was time for our Warlocks to enter the arena, and we had high hopes, especially after our recent Solo Shuffle targeting guide, which seemed to get a lot of comments telling us how squishy mages are and how Warlocks are the tankiest caster in the entire game. So when our 2100 Warlock entered the game, we were ready for our mages to be absolutely humiliated, which might have been the case if they didn't completely kite away from their gate and ruin any chance at creating a gap. <clears throat> 
Anyway, despite all of this, our Warlock did show that they were quite tanky and managed to trade cooldowns long enough to survive a grand total of 31 seconds. Not bad without a healer, but still behind our mage. No worries though, because we still had our secret weapon to take down Marrow. The Warlocks could be redeemed by none other than Mercy, indisputably one of the best players Europe has to offer. If there was one person who could challenge our rank 1 mage, it would be this god tier Warlock. From the start, Mercy did everything right. Dark packed on Serenity at high HP, the Howl of Terror, and then kiting in the midfield getting ready to portal. Things were looking good for our hero. He even pre-ported the hunt. This was it. This must be the record. The melee would even reconnect, but no worries because our Warlock God has a gateway in his back pocket. Things were looking good, but maybe actually too good, since despite having Shield Wall up to spam CC, the last hope for our Warlocks died after 41 seconds. Well. Isn't this awkward? Anyway, we had our results for the first zero healer challenge. We expected Marrow to win, but what's more important is the data here. And keep in mind, these were everyone's best attempts. Now, we know this wasn't the most scientific study of all time, but we hope it helps clear up this misconception that we see all the time, that mages are, quote, not tanky, which was a repeated comment in our solo shuffle targeting guide. Of course, this wasn't solo shuffle, but a duelist mage beating out a professional warlock should indicate something. And just for fun, we had Marrow try out a 1v3 by adding a warrior to help out the monk and demon hunter, and even then, he lasted just two seconds short of our pro warlock. And if you weren't convinced by now, we put Marrow in a 1v2 against the warrior and the demon hunter, where he survived entirely by himself with no external healing for nearly two minutes straight. Maybe the map played some difference since our warlocks could have teleported on a z-axis, but so could the mages, and their teleport has a longer range and can even heal them. Warlocks might be tankier than mages when they are forced to stand still, but mages are much better at avoiding damage entirely, which is what Marrow did so well against our double melee. This of course required him to pay attention to mobility cooldowns and try to keep something ready to counter any gap closers. When mages aren't able to do this, yes, they will be squishy, which might explain some of the comments we see. This is also why it can be hard to make tier lists that represent everyone. Since at the rank 1 level, Arcane is one of the best specs in the game, which is why you see it in every tournament, but for someone new to the class or new to PvP, Arcane will seem squishy. We try and correct for this in every tier list, which is why we had Arcane on the A tier in our last solo shuffle update, despite the fact that many rank 1 players voted consistently at S tier in our polls. Anyway, we would love to get the community involved in future content, so if you want to win some game time, be sure to give this video a like and comment down below your suggestions for future challenges. And if you're interested in learning how Marrow was able to survive so long, we've developed a brand new course dedicated to teaching mages some advanced anti-melee techniques. This can be found alongside all of our other premium guides available only at skillcap.com. We work with the world's best players to teach you rank 1 fundamentals that include everything you need to know to start playing just like the pros. Everything comes back by a rating gain guarantee where we promise that you will gain at least 400 rating while actively using our guides. So if you want to get started on your next PvP journey, check out skillcap.com today. Anyway, that about wraps it up for this one. Again, let us know in the comments below what challenges you'd like to see next. As always, though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.